I really enjoyed looking at this score a lot, Marcus. And it, it, there's so many great ideas. It, it, once again, it's a score that's so different from a lot of the others that um, you know, it's it's one that I'll I'll probably you know it'll stand out in my memory quite a bit. Now, having said that, that doesn't mean that it is perfectly conceived. There's a lot of fine tuning that needs to happen in here, and especially. Um, something that you need to to think about is avoiding dynamic mixing so much. Uh, really much, much better to take an approach where you let the orchestration itself do the balancing for you. And, and then everybody can be more or less the same dynamic level and, and the uh, things will fall into place. Now, of course, that's not possible in all situations. Uh, I mean, half of film music today has very uh, carefully mixed and balanced kinds of recordings like there where, where certain things will be brought up in the mix that are kind of not really possible not really feasible on the concert stage however um, let's just dive right into this uh, I'm not going to waste too many words because um, as people who have been following these evaluations probably know that this is my second day of dealing with uh, people replacing my windows upstairs and they are going to show up who knows when. Hopefully not before I'm finished with this evaluation. So I'd better get straight into it and not waste any time. I said after wasting about half a minute of time explaining how I shouldn't do that. So now um, just looking at this and you know I think that it's fine to mark your brass forte and your strings and winds fortissimo, right? So I think that like with the amount of force that you're having right here, the wind should really be fortissimo, not forte. Um, and then, you know, right in here, your cellos and horns being piano, that's totally fine. So, you know, bium, 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 bum, ba -da 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 -dum. one of the evaluation criteria, like the, like, to think about is um, pitch weight in the upper middle register of the orchestra um, being a little bit too much for a full or fully orchestrated piece you know the way that it was scored in the piano score you you get by that immediately you know you've got lower pitches and uh, it is all dealt with beautifully okay the thematic material repeating often possibly sounding repetitive if orchestrated the same way throughout eh. Well, you know, it's kind of the same thing again, isn't it? It's And you have a little bit of variation here. You're kind of adding this trombone, and then it immediately goes down to piano and so on. And then you have a little bit of change here. You've got some doubling from below on double bass. But it's it's not quite enough to make these two sections feel varied, right? It, like It's not like you're building on this all that much. So... Consider that as a possible way of going forward with this, right? You know, make the make the dynamics more uniform, make the orchestra work within the dynamics to balance, and and maybe make this more, you know, like see if there's some way that you can you can vary this or build on it or or in some way not make it feel too repetitive. And then right in here, you've got this great idea here with uh, um, you have. Uh, trills for your um, your violins, and so we're assuming that all of the all of the pitches are trilling. Uh, and you might even want to add a note to that, say you know uh, divisi a three trill all pitches, you know just to just to be absolutely sure that people don't think that this is just the just the top pitch trilling because this is the typical kind of thing that gets the raised hand at rehearsal, right? So up goes the hand, and the first, the second violin say, do you mean that all of the pitches should trill in this, or just like the top pitch? And you say, oh, all the, you know, and then you're finished with that, and then the first violin say, and that's for us too, right? And right there, you've wasted about $75 worth of rehearsal time, right? So just try to be really clear about things like this. So I would say div, div a three trill all pitches, all right? Just to be absolutely sure. But that isn't really solving 
the bigger problem, which is that what the mock-up is telling you is really what is going to happen here. And that is that nobody is going to be able to hear these beautiful trilled chords. If you want them to stand out, if you want them to be a significant part of this texture right in here, you're going to have to bring up the, the volume. A piano is too soft. You've got this lovely um, lower melody, which I think is cool. Remember, one of our evaluation criteria is that the melodic development is soaring quite high uh, to the uppermost orchestral register. How do you deal with that? Well, you, you, deal, you dealt with it by giving it to the middle strings, which I think is very cool. I think this is the first time I've seen uh, this. Is the Well, I'm, I'm remembering it as the first time perhaps there was another uh, entry up to this point that uh, had the answering phrase play the melodic developments more in a in a much lower area um, and I will talk about that in a second but you you got this crossing over from below so that is adding a lot of shine above it in terms of overtones right over these trills and you you've got your bassoons playing over the same pitches and the oboe playing over that. So the oboe itself plus the overtones is going to basically bury these trills. If you want them to sound, you're going to have to score them mezzo forte. That's the only way forward for that. Now here you got this emphasis on the B. So I guess you got this B, something like that is sort of what you want. Um, you should be scoring a first part up here, not down here, right? Here you're saying one. So first first horn player is on the top staff, just as you've indicated it, right? Perhaps this should be the third player or the fourth player. Okay, other than that, it's just a really, just, just a, a thrilling idea, right? So if, if this were all worked out, um, I'm a little curious about the sound set that you're using, um, whether it is the native sound set to the application that you're using. I, I'm, I'm guessing Dorico. Um, and I, I would I just think Note Performer would play this back a lot, just a lot more clearly, especially like going forward when you bring in some clarinet or uh, yeah, clarinet soloing. Um, it just it just would be way more balanced with um, with note performer. Okay, so not only do we have the uh, concern in the criteria about reusing the exact arrangement style between these two sections, we also have the concern about reusing the exact same uh, style here as well. And and it sort of starts off that way, doesn't it? But I mean the but you're throwing in a few little things here that's kind of push upwards, which I think should be accompanied by something in the brass or perhaps clarinets. Uh, I, I just don't feel it's 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 powerful enough on its own. Um, but you don't want it to be too strong because you've got this ya da 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 you know, placed. Um, uh, there's, there's really no need to leave out. Yeah, I mean, just kind of looking at the way that this is scored, it's it's just really strange there's there's no there's no need for one group to play to phrase differently from the other and also think about how they're going to be bowing this right so do you really want uh, uh, right is that what you or do you want uh, 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 you know there's like a bunch of different ways of doing this like if i were going to if i felt that i had to slur in here i would probably go um down up down slur and then uh, just jump to here because it's easier to, to reference. And then slur. And then um, down, up, down. Right. I just think I think it's it's better to not play around with that. Just have these two play. I mean, there's there is nothing to be gained by having one slur different from the other and leave out a note and stuff like that. It's just there's there's no need. There's no there's no reason. Don't do that. OK. Um, and you're sort of reversing your accompaniment pattern here in the in the oboe so you know whatever it doesn't really matter um one way or another and then here we're beginning this yep up 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 um 
da, 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 right? And okay, <laughs> this is all fun right in here. I think you could write this out as uh, eighth notes with a, a single beam tremolo uh, on each stem, and then you'd get the same thing, and it's easier to read for the player. Now, this is kind of interesting what you do here dynamically. You sort of pull the rug out from under, right? Our expectations is that the is that this next um, section right here, which by the way, you pass the criteria for upper middle register relentlessness. It's it's not a problem here. Uh, but it, it is just kind of a little bit of a problem in how you're scoring the melody stronger than the accompaniment, like hugely stronger. And it you know got me looking at how you treat the melody in other places, like right here you've got your clarinet playing this quite loud compared to everybody being softer um, with the occasional flare. And um, I, I'm just going to say this once again, it is really not necessary to bring out the melody by marking it louder, right? Um, it is better to have the entire section around the same dynamic and you know you can write solo on a part or but it'll just be it'll be really obvious um it'll be really obvious what instrument is playing what you know what part of the melody right that it's if it if an instrument is carrying the melody they will they will stand out don't worry the the, mel the melody itself contains that function within it right and there's some other strange things in here where you've got the melody in uh, one instrument and then you've got like the same kind of the same general thing being played by another instrument maybe tracking from below by an octave or, or playing the same thing on the same pitch and like one is soft and the other is loud so I would say just you know try to the 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 horn is already going to be softer than the trumpet, right? You don't need to mark one down from the other. So I think it's better just to decide what the general um, what the general dynamic is for the entire orchestra and stick to that, and you know add nuances uh, within the within the line of the melody itself to make it stand out more or to make it fluctuate in ways that bring it out, right? So. Um, if you had really intended, you know, let's see, it looks like from looking at the melody, it really looks like you did intend for this to con continue forward being strong. Um, but then you felt that since it's sort of like a subsidiary part right in here, I'll just make it soft. And then, then like when the actual melody comes in, I'll just have that stated by stronger instruments and I'll mark them louder, right? So that, so don't do that kind of an approach, right? If it really is going to be a bigger section, mark everything bigger, like mezzo forte here at least, right? Or forte. Uh, because it just really feels underpowered. This bum, bum, bum. It's like, it's just, you know, ba da 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 bum, 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 da 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 You know, it, it, it's, it is sort of jarring and it, it's kind of hard to, like the, the continuity of the dynamics you know, you know it, it isn't a place where you're contrasting. It's just more of a place where the continuity falls off, right? It, it doesn't feel like a contrast. It feels like a dropout, um, you know, that like possibly unintentional or just maybe not very strongly scored, right? So perhaps this could all be stronger behind the melodic instruments is what I'm saying. And then also, look, you do have other subsidiary parts, uh, other harmonic parts like right here this trombone is doubling the soft cellos at forte right and then these c thirds the c and the e being played by the cello and the viola uh softly and then here loudly in the trombone so perhaps the perhaps you didn't proof the dynamics uh, throughout but it's just that's the big thing that immediate will immediately will throw the rehearsal into chaos okay so um and then there's also like the you know, you've got uh, hairpin dynamics on some parts and not on others. All right, but we've got this, uh, you know, da, 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 and pluck, 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 and then da, 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 da. That's all fine. Uh, it's really fun, actually. Uh, but, you know, you're going towards a new section, and so you should really mark what everybody's dynamic is when you get there, right? So, um, and then once again, like, what is the, you know, what are you trying to do here? Um, 
This is nice, the way that you've separated out some of the figuration in the left hand. Um, you know, just a staccato uh, bassoon. It's a little abrupt, actually. Um, and then you've got these flowing lines in the clarinet. And, and once again, like forte, and it really sounds loud compared to everybody else's dynamic. Except for the trumpets, of course, which really stand out hugely. So, I mean, I just feel that, once again, the, the balance is is just way too much. You know, the, the foreground elements are, you know, it's it's kind of like trying to, it's like listening to a choir, right? You're listening to a choir and the there's a solo part in the choir and the tenor uh, is standing right in front of you and the choir is like standing 30 feet behind him, right? So... That, that's just kind of the effect of this sort of separation of, of dynamics. Now, having said that, let's apply, let's not get too obsessed with that because there's kind of nothing you can do to fix it. Uh, let's talk about um, some of the evaluation criteria that I've got for this page. Contrast of color and breadth of texture and middle register scoring. You, you tick that box really nicely. Uh, maintaining differentiated roles in closely spaced melodies and overlapping accompaniment figures. I mean, you do that if you could balance some of these, some of the dynamics in here, that would just really be brilliant, right? Um, ba, 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 yeah, da, 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 dun. It, it's a little smooth, like some of the some of that those sort of middle voices are a little smoother than they need to be. They could be a little bit more, um, more punctuated, more, um, more emphatic. I feel. Da 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 so, da -da -da and then on the next screen, and you know, once again, we sort of have the missing ending of the triplet, right? Uh, you could have easily thrown in the E, and if you really want to hold that B, then you could just go divisi and have some of your violas going da 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 dum, da da dum, da da dum. Right, rather than dumb and then missing e. Yeah, because I just, I just, the missing e sort of, it, it just feels wrong to me. Uh, yeah, and I mean, there's some, there's some really cool scoring in here, uh, that that kind of like, you know, you're putting the e on top, right, instead of on the bottom. But you know, just because you want to hold on to the B here, it doesn't mean that you also cannot throw in the E in terms of like a divisi kind of a thing. And it's kind of cool, you've got your melody here in the uh, in the strings to begin with, so that's going to be nice and strong even if it is a, a softer dynamic, right? And then you have your horn come in to double it, right? And then like here you're sort of you're also ticking the box of keeping the textural contours fresh right because you're adding some elements you're adding bassoon support of the viola all right and that's another instrument that you could go a to and like have the top part holding the b and the second bassoonist dump diving down to the e below all right so there's a lot that you could do with it and um yeah and this you know and then adding the oboe above we're just kind of go doing a little bit of a back and forth. That's kind of a neat little function. Uh, and, but I, you know, I, I feel like you could have even done more with it, right? Whether it was adding an octave, you, you know, if you're going to go up here and you're going to add this little thing from above, it'll become a distraction. So at this point, you could change, you could change the violins to like just just divisi octaves, right? And then maybe can continue with the horn doubling and have like clarinet doubling on the top line so it keeps a kind of a cool timbre right in there. So yeah and this is kind of cool this this little um uh this little repeated pedal right down here ba 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 that's that's kind of cool. 
Um, that's the first that I've seen as well. And there's just a lot of firsts in this, a lot of real creative individual approaches that I think are, are neat, but I, I just think that you need to build on them even a little bit more, right? But, but you know, having said that, like, I this is, this is a score that I'm not going to go on and on about, you know, tweaking different little things because it kind of doesn't need to. It's a little deceptive because the, um, the, the mock-up makes it sound a little more basic than it actually really is. I think with, um, with a more sophisticated uh, sound set, even just note performer, um, I think it would sound, you know, just like a lot, it would make a lot more sense to the casual viewer. So with that, I'm going to just say, you know, that's, <laughs> that is all I need to say about this. Uh, excellent work, Marcus. And, uh, you know, I, I, it makes me really curious to, to think about what you will possibly do with next year's evaluation if you have the time to do it. Uh, just once again, very different. I'm trying to keep each of our, um, each of our entry uh, excerpts or excuse me, each of our excerpts uh, to be as individual as possible from one another, right? So, so you know, we had a beautiful, florid, fluid kind of a piece in uh, the Mussorgsky's Seamstress, and we had, you know, this kind of moment of crystalline clarity with uh, Lily Boulanger, and we had um, that just kind of the wonderful motoristic energy of of um and and soul of ravel and you, you know so like the next piece is going to be once again different <laughs> and uh and striking you know just really trying to find pieces that and also pieces that are kind of out of the way right that like are not necessarily showing up on every recital program because i i feel that like the more unique i can make that uh, the less the, the less the same that everybody's orchestration is going to sound. And perhaps there's something to that. Maybe it's just my imagination, but it seems to be working so far. So, and it worked in this piece, obviously, for Marcus. So thank you, Marcus, so much for your entry, for your support on Patreon. It's hugely appreciated. Thanks to all the semi-brev uh, entries and uh, entrants, and I, I hope you can all comment on each other's pieces, uh, each other's entries, either here on YouTube or uh, on Patreon, where I'm also going to be posting these uh, Patreon entries, uh, or perhaps in fa on Facebook, where they'll also get a post. Uh, but yeah, but please, you know, if there's any feedback that you've got from Marcus, write it down below. And Marcus, if you can think of anything that you want to respond to from other semi-brev entries, please let them know. I, I think just really, you know, I I want more and more comments. You know, uh, 165 entries now uh, is, you know, that should get thousands of comments ultimately um, throughout the course of uploading all these videos. Uh, and so far, it seems to be working, but let's not tail off. Please keep those comments coming. And once again, my thanks to everybody. I really appreciate it hugely. And now, if I'm really lucky today, I will have time for just one more evaluation before the window people come. <laughs>